Right, okay. Hello, YouTube. This is the DBT Gamer Show. Episode 60. And today I'm going to review another awesome Digimon game. Digimon World Dusk, the Nintendo DS. It's a really, really good Digimon game. So, without further ado, let's begin. Right, let's start my DS. And let's get this started. First, let's go to the story. The story of Digimon World Dusk is really good. Basically, the story goes, you play the Digimon tamer, you gotta be a boy or a girl, and at the start of the game, you were told that there are these two cities there, the Dusk City and the Dawn City. Now, depending on which version of the game you buy, will be the city that you live in. Now, the two cities are fighting each other for, um... Fighting each other for some reason. But they're not fighting each other on purpose, they're fighting each other because of the evil Digimon who are, who are trying to take over the digital world. That's the way the story works. And the story is pretty good. Okay, next let's go to the most player. The most player in this game is pretty good. There is there are three multiplayer things you can do. You can battle with your friends, trade with your friends, and you can also mate Digimon with your friends. Next, let's go to graphics. The graphics in this game are really, really good. They're very similar to Digimon World DS. And the graphics are very colourful and are kind of in two and three in between two and three D. So they're really good. Okay, next let's move to controls. The controls in this game are very simple. You use the D pad to move stuff around, the A button talks to people and selects stuff, the B button cancels stuff, the start button moves it to pause menu, select button doesn't do anything, L button doesn't do anything, R doesn't do anything, X also moves the menu, and Y doesn't do anything. So there are controls in the game. And the controls all work really well. Okay, let's go to music. The music in this game is also rather good. It's quite nice, it's pretty good. Okay, next let's go to game, but the gameplay of this game is Adventure RPG. The adventure aspect is where you are searching for the Digimon world for the um, bad Digimon, and the RPG element works for training up the Digimon which you collect through the game. Okay, let's go to the good stuff about this game. The good stuff about this game is definitely the story. The, the story is a, is a pretty good one, and it really... It's really good. The new thing about this game is the cutscenes. The cutscenes don't have voices in them, but they explain the story pretty well. And you're going to this game is definitely the gameplay. If you are a fan of the Digimon series, the gameplay will definitely not disappoint you. And you will be kept amused for about 20 to 30 hours. It's quite a long game. Um, and you're going to this game is the quest system. In the game, there are several quests which you will need to do to unlock more bits of the story mode. And some of the quests can be quite hard, especially the ones in the swamp area. That swamp is like a maze. Um, a look about this game is definitely the um, Tamer Info setting in the, in the pause menu. The Tamer Info setting shows you how many Digimon you've collected and how many Digimon you collected. It's a really, really good system. There are a total of 397 different Digimon in this game, so there's loads to collect, and you should have no problem finding your favourites. And you'll go to this game, it have a shop. There are several shops in the Digimon world, so you can, so you can buy weapons and items for your Digimon. Um, okay, next let's go on to the battles. We just find one out. Show you the battles. This is the main Digimon City where you can replenish your Digimon's health. Now, where the hell is that teleporter?
Now, when you step onto the teleport, you will teleport to the, um... Digimon transport system, which transports you to the rest of the digital world. Now, when you're in the dungeons of the game, you'll be, you'll be brought to a ran there'll be a random battle system like in most RPGs. I'm going to go to the um, forest. Now, as you walk through the dungeons, you will eventually find a battle. Here we go. Now, the battle system is very simple. It's very similar to the Digimon World DS. Basically, you can either choose to fight the monsters, run away, or use your items, or defend. You have set, your Digimon one will, will learn several attacks. I am going to use Holy Slash. Once you beat the Digimon in the battle, you will earn experience points and also money. The experience points will level up your monsters and the money will can be used to buy stuff. Next is the bosses. The bosses in this game are, are really, really hard and they're a very good challenge. The other about this game is the Digimon Evolution System. The Evolution System is extremely simple. All you do is pick a Digimon in your um, infantry and go to Digimon route. It will show all the forms that your Digimon can Digivolve into. It will tell you the attributes that you need to get this monster. Example, to get Angemon, you need 70% 70 70 friendship and 300 holy experience. So if you get those attributes, your monster will Digivolve. Will Digivolve. And the Digimon evolution system is pretty simple. Okay. Oh, because that game is definitely the weapons. There are several weapons in the game which you can buy and equip to your Digimon. Let me show you them. It is Mega Gardron, and here are the weapons I've equipped in. In this game, you can equip any weapons that you like. You have swords, shields, and rings. The rings will give your monster more stats, the attack the sword will give your weapon your monster more attack power, the shield will give you more defense power. And there are several weapons which you can cut and use in the game. They are quite expensive but they're definitely worth it. Now I'm very sorry YouTube but I've run out of time so please join me in part two where I'll finish off reviewing Digimon World Dusk. Until then YouTube, bye bye.